What's up YouTube? Just going to be working on the F-250 today. Uh, this video might be helpful if you have an F-150 or a Mustang or any other uh, 80s, 90s uh, Ford vehicle, maybe a Ford van. Um, there's a piece that broke off inside my steering column. Um, I went to start the truck and I heard a click. The truck did start, but then I heard a click and I knew something was wrong. I went to try and turn it off and the truck wouldn't turn off. So, uh, ended up having to stall the truck because this is a manual fortunately i could turn it off that way by just stalling it and then disconnecting the battery because the ignition was stuck on uh, so what it ended up being is there is a little plastic piece um, i'll show you guys a picture of that now uh, this little plastic piece goes inside the steering column it's what makes the uh, tilt steering mechanism work on these vehicles and uh, it just basically makes it so that the steering column can pivot and there's two parts to it um, one of the plastic pieces, uh, the upper plastic piece, broke on my truck. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to replace the plastic piece inside of your ignition uh, that goes from the barrel lock, the upper, you know, the key switch, uh, down to the ignition switch that's up underneath the column inside these vehicles. So um, the key, when you crank it, it actually pushes a rod that goes up underneath the, the dash, and that rod pushes on... Uh, another plastic piece that in turn pushes the actual ignition switch and activates uh, the engine. So that's what I'm going to be fixing today, guys. All right, I got the got the battery out of this thing. Got the steering column pulled apart. Just basically pulled the plastic piece off. Popped right off. <clears throat> Took off the plastic pieces that go. On the steering column, there's three screws, one on each, one on one side, two on the other, and pull all those off, and we get down to this. So now I've got a 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter there, and I'm just unscrewing the steering wheel. I'll take this off. and fix the linkage that goes inside of here. I think I showed you guys already this, but um, the key, you can see in there, it turns that little slot and there's a gear in there that pushes on a plastic rod inside of here. And it's been super hot lately, it's been like 110. So I'm out here at night doing it. Um, here's a look, this is where the ignition box, ignition box connects right here and then goes up to the steering column beyond that to here and inside there you can kind of see the plastic piece with that little slot right there that's what your ignition switch uh, that little pin sits in that slot and when you move the key it just slides that up and down and that's what starts and kills your truck. And so the problem I had was it started it by pushing it forward. And then I hit the key to turn it off and it wouldn't turn off. And there's a little pin in here that connects this piece to the piece up in the steering column up in here. And since this is a tilt steering, this is the tilt steering button. Um, it has to have a little connector in the middle so it can like hinge and rotate. And that is where mine is broken. So, um, I'm not going to go over every single step. Um, mine didn't have an airbag, so that, I, you know, disconnected the battery a couple days ago, took the steering column all off, ordered the parts I needed. Now I'm taking the steering wheel off so that I can get down and replace that linkage that I just showed you. And I do have a new um, linkage for the lower and the upper, um, and I did get a new key, um, FOB, or I mean a new key um, cylinder lock while I was at it so um, here's the new cylinder lock i just got this at o'reilly's this is a, a knockoff this isn't a ford part this is a cheap one um, but you can see it goes in there and i did try just replacing this first and that's when i learned just by looking at it that the plastic piece was broke off inside of here and that this was going to need to all come apart so that's where we're at taking the steering wheel off the f-250 tonight uh, wish me luck
All right, so it's the next day, and I went and got a steering wheel puller from O'Reilly. Uh, you can see it's got this bolt here in the middle, and this is threaded. And there's like an H block thing here. And uh, it comes with these bolts on the outside. They thread into the steering wheel. And then this pushes. There's a little piece right here that goes on the tip. And that pushes the shaft out of the steering wheel, uh, hopefully. And you just crank down on this once you get it all in there, just the way I have it shown there. Uh, you just crank down, and it should pop right off of there, hopefully. Um, so if you need it, uh, there's a piece of it. If you need to look up the kit, uh, this is the kit 67011. That's the uh, steering wheel and lock plate remover kit. Uh, box, this is the part that goes inside the steering column, down below the steering column. And uh, this goes underneath. This is what we're pushing on. That little rod right there needs to be actuated to turn the truck on start the truck and turn the truck off. That's your ignition um, that rides up underneath inside of there and held on by two screws. And then um, I, I did buy this. This is not a Motocraft part. This is just an O'Reilly uh, part. I forget the brand, but it's just a barrel lock. And then here uh, we have, uh, this is probably the culprit. I suspect this is the culprit right here. Um, this is the piece that goes, you see these gears here are what are located inside of the steering column here. So if you look at this steering column, those, that gear goes in and out uh, when you turn the key here, when the steering uh, lock is normal, or the key lock is normally in here when you turn it, it actuates that plastic rod uh, which moves in and out. That gear moves uh, the rod in and out, which pushes on the ignition box right there. So, uh, that's the ignition box, that's the rod, and then this is actually the piece that goes inside that the rod connects to. Uh, the rod, I believe it goes, uh, the pin that broke, I believe it sits in that little pocket right there. And that allows the steering, um, this, which is inside the steering column, that allows this to pivot um, inside of that little cavity right there like that. So it sits in there like that, I think. I'm not really sure. I'll, I'll know once we get inside of there. I'm not 100% sure how that works yet, but I, th I suspect that's how it works. So, um, new ignition came with uh, two new screws. So there's um, two new screws to hold the ignition switch in, and there they are. And there are the Torx bits. So we need to have the Torx uh, set uh, with you. And uh, that's it. So these are the four pieces to completely rebuild, you know, what I think is the problem. I didn't really have to get this, but when I was playing with the existing switch down there, it was really stiff. And I think that might be part of the problem why um, this little pin broke out of the old one. Um, so this is the main thing at a minimum that I think I needed. But while I have this all apart, might as well do the switch and the key lock, the barrel lock, and then also the piece that the pin rides in. Might as well replace all of those parts while I have it apart. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crank this down. Hopefully get the steering wheel popped off of here. Uh, wish me luck.
bolts off. That certainly makes it uh, more roomy in here. <laughs> and so the next thing, if I remember correctly, is I need to get this down to where I can get to these other, um, once again, yay, Torx uh, screws in there. And also there's like a locking jaw mechanism that kind of holds this whole thing uh, up in here. Um, so first thing I need to do is to get to these screws. There's one on each side. There's one there. I'm just trying to find it in the viewfinder so you all can see it. Uh, there, now you can see it. Okay, so there's one there. It's our first target that's on the left. And there's another one over here. That's the second target that's on the right. And those have got to come out. And like I said before, there's like a jaw mechanism down here. Uh, here's the two um, teeth of the jaw mechanism. It's a locking mechanism, spring-loaded locking mechanism. There's one here where my thumb's pointing now. And there's one there where my thumb's pointing now. And uh, those, those have got to basically release the bottom. And these have to release the top, the two I showed you before. So we're going to go ahead and pull this. This, that, 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 these, these, and there's four bolts that we're not gonna re we're not gonna release all of them completely, but we are gonna let it down. And they're back here. They hold the back on back here. I don't know if I can get a shot of those or not, but there's four of them, and they hold uh, the steering column kind of up against the dash, up under the dash. So four of those are gonna have to be released, uh, just enough to where. Just enough to where I can get to those. We're only we're only gonna release. I think you have to unscrew the two in the front, and then you have to lower the two in the back down just enough from the video I saw. But the guy was working on a, a Ford van, an Astro van or something, which has a really similar steering column to this one. So um, let's see if I can at least get a shot of one of them. Okay, so there's a hole there. Someone may have already been down here. Um, okay, here's one nut right there. Okay, there's one nut. You can see it right there. There's a stud and a nut. And there should be another one on the other side. There it is. Okay, stud and a nut. Alright, those. Those two have got to become completely out, I believe. And then there's another one back here on the left. It's right here. Okay, those don't have to come completely out. The two in the back, we're just going to lower those down enough to where this comes down enough where we can get the two in the front. Now here's the last one on the right side. Let's see if you can see it there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's back up in there. I got some wiring in the way, but this one's got to come down. We're not, <clears throat> again, we're not going to release that other one in the back. So that's where we're at. We get the steering wheel off. Time to dig into the steering wheel column. And if I can Go back to riding and enjoying, enjoying things. All right, I'm back. I had to go uh, run and get my snap ring pliers and uh, my socket uh, set, the seven-piece uh, star bit set from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, the T20 uh, is the one that I needed to do uh, these screws in here. Uh, those are uh, T20s. And then also I used the T25 uh, star to get the ignition off. And uh, I'll also be using one of these larger ones on uh, there. So if you don't have a um, star bit socket set, you should probably go get one or rent one or whatever because you're going to need it for one, two, three, four, five, six at least. And I'm not sure if this needs to come off, but 
Um, I can see one right there as well. So anyhow, uh, just going to be taking this off now. I've already loosened it up a little bit. I just wanted to show you guys what I used to do it. Uh, to take off the star bit uh, bolts, the star bit head bolts that are on the top and the bottom of the uh, turn signal uh, control here, and uh, windshield wiper, windshield wiper turn signal control. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off now, and then I'll get in here and try and get this part off. Alright, I went ahead and screwed the uh, tilt steering uh, mechanism back in just temporarily so that I can take as much of the uh, force off of the spring that uh, pushes that back up. So that's the spring right here and um, when you tilt that up it lets as much pressure out as possible and uh, just want to work on that while I get this out. All right, I'm just removing this here. I went ahead and removed the star end bolt that was there and took the bolt out. Now you can see it's out. It does have a little pin in the back. It goes in the top little hole there. And then there's a, a screw that goes in the bottom one. So those are both out. I'll just tuck those back there out of the way. Tell everybody to reinstall it. Now I can get at this plastic piece better and the clip that's underneath that. Two big flat screwdrivers. Now I got this thing down, if I can get to these side ones and loosen those up. Uh, one on each side there. And you can see there's one here. And one over here I need to take out. Just inspecting here. I don't think this piece is going to need to come out. I'm just kind of looking at it.
a T30. So it's a T20, T25, and a T30 for the three you need. So here's where our pin is supposed to be. And you can see there's nothing there. So here's our new one. And that's what it's supposed to look like. I'll just open up a new one. Show it to you guys. Alright, so here's the new actuator rods, the lower actuator rod. It should have a little pin there, a little dowel. And you see it's missing on this one. So it's likely either inside here, inside that grease there, or inside the other one still. But there was a key in there, it would turn. And there's a gear in the back down there. But when you push the key, it, it pushes this rod and we're going to replace the rod and then it will actually push there's another plastic piece in here that we have to replace also alright guys so here is the rod that we're replacing in the pin and you can see that normally when you turn the key uh, you can see it inside of there and inside of here uh, it goes back and forth like this so there's a gear in the back of there uh, that these teeth uh, catch on and that gear uh, sits right about in there, right inside of there. So we just need to pull this one out and then we're gonna slide this one in. Pull this all the way out. All right, so we got it out, but to be able to get it back in, we have to pull this part out and the little gear in there, put this in and then put it back in. All right, so here's our old one that we're gonna be replacing. And you can see it's pretty well worn. And this yellow grease on here actually used to be white grease. And so we're going to put some new white grease on the new one before we install it. Make sure this is all lubed up in here. So I'm just going to get a tiny pair of needle nose and get this little clip out of here. Alright, got that little bugger out of there. So that comes out, the little plastic retainer clip. And then to get this other little metal clip out, you just gotta give it a little rotate there. And once you rotate it, uh, you gotta rotate it pretty good. Probably a good half a turn. It should pull out. Once it's completely sideways like that, you'll see there's a little uh, free shaft where that can pull on out of there. So now we got that key out of there, that little metal retainer, which we'll save for later. You can see the gear, and the gear in there is the one that, you know, again, this right here 
Um, you can see it inside of here. Uh, popped out now, but you can see, you get the idea now that uh, when you're going like this, it turns inside of there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. And put some fresh grease. And the new, the new piece in there. Just double check the old one and the new one. Are exactly the same. All right, just taking a screwdriver here, and there's the lower piece in there. You can actually see it from below. There is a slot, though, where you can stick a screwdriver. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but as I'm pulling on it, uh, the end of it's pulling out. So it is spring-loaded. And what do I see sticking out there? Looks like the pin. Let's see if I can get it. There it is. That's the pin, guys. That's the one that broke off of the old push rod. So this piece right here uh, used to go in there. Um, so this piece used to go in here, like that. And for whatever reason, it popped out. that and now I have to put the new one in
<clears throat> so I just went ahead and just went ahead and removed a little bit of material there. Uh, try and narrow that down so I could fit it in there without having to take this piece out. So I'm honestly not even sure how to take that piece out, and I don't really want to mess with that piece. So we're gonna leave that in there for now and just see if I can fit my new uh, slotted piece in there down like that, right, guys? Oh yeah, there we go, that'll work. <clears throat> All right, so once you get that gear and that clip, that little plate back in, ready to test your key. should have this little piece right here opposite sides from the little pin so make sure you got your key set up right and you're gonna know which way the pin is by the hole and the slot goes on the top and looks like it's working See, it goes all the way back, all the way to the back, and definitely goes all the way this way. All right, let's see if I can get this thing back in the truck. This is the part right here. That is going to be interfacing
pin is by the hole and the slot goes on the top and looks like it's working you see it goes all the way back all the way to the back Anyhow, I got that piece in there, and now all I need to do is uh, screw this back up in there, and I'm going to attach the other end of the steering line, um, the U-joint drive shaft up in there. Uh, this thing right here, I'm just going to take that and attach it to the end of the uh, steering shaft in there. Just use a flathead screwdriver to get the 
spring in the side here. It's kind of a pain. You got to come at it just right from this angle and pull real hard. Get that top pulled over the lip and just kind of push it on. Took took a couple tries, but I got it on there. All right, you can see I got that all bolted back in. Got the ignition switch all bolted back in and got the harness connected to that with the eight millimeter bolt. So that's all connected and wired back in. And now I was just testing up here to make sure this is working correctly. And it is, you can feel it has resistance now when you turn uh, the key. Okay, so I'm going to leave that in the run position so I could pull that back out because you need to take this back out before you can put your plastic cover back on. Alright, so here's a look at the pin and the rod. This is the hole where the metal pin goes into the rod. And that's the little pin that's had my truck down. Now that we got that replaced, uh, hopefully it'll start.
right guys, moment of truth, here we go. Well guys, I guess it worked. I got a running truck again. Uh, two of them. White one is fixed now. Got the uh, belt tensioner fixed on that one, so be sure to catch that video as well. But the green truck is back in action. Godzilla will live to drive another day.